So, I recently bought a 9mm handgun, and, well I guess not too recently, but I find myself wanting to upgrade to something a bit larger, with a little bit more kick, some higher capacity, so I think I'm going to move from a single stack 9mm to something in the double stack range in either 40 caliber or 45 caliber. So to determine which of those two I wanted to use, uh, I took a look at what do I use my gun for. Well, I carry it concealed, and I carry it for the need of self-defense, in case I ever need it someday. So I've read a lot of articles online about, you know, stopping power is a myth, and you know it's more about putting rounds on target and if you hit someone with a bullet it's gonna hurt or it's gonna do damage or it's gonna stop them regardless of the bullet but I wanted to put it into numbers and facts so I have here a comparison of the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 45 ACP because those are the two rounds that I'm considering carrying for purposes of this discussion I'm using info from Hornady's website on their Hornady Critical Defense Round. So for the Hornady Critical Defense Round in 40 Smith & Wesson, it's a 165 grain round, and at 25 yards its velocity is 1,008 feet per second, or 307 meters per second. Their 45 ACP round is 183 grains, and its 25 yard velocity is 876 feet per second or 267 meters per second. The cross sectional area of the 40 caliber bullet is 0 0.839 centimeters squared and the cross sectional area of a 45 caliber bullet is 1.03 centimeters squared. Now why do those areas matter? Because force is a measure of mass times velocity but pressure is a measure of force divided by area and I wanted to see which one of these two bullets exerted a higher pressure on their target or a higher impact force which bullet had more stopping power so force equals mass times velocity the mass of a 40 caliber projectile in the Hornady critical defense is 10.7 grams and its velocity at 25 yards is 307 meters per second giving us 3285 grams meters per second divide that force by the cross-sectional area the area of the round as if you're looking straight down on it what is the size of the circle of material that round impacts. So you divide that force by that area and that will give us the pressure. So for a 40 caliber bullet that area is 0 0.839 centimeters squared and when you divide that force of 3,285 grams meters per second you get a pressure of 3,915.4 for the 45 it's a 12 gram projectile traveling at 267 meters per second at 25 yards giving us 3204 grams meters per second if you divide that force by its cross-sectional area you get 3204 grams meters per second divided by an area of one 0.03 centimeters squared to get a pressure of 3,110.7. Now you can see here that by a ratio of 1.26 to 1, the 40 Smith & Wesson actually has a higher impact force than the 45 ACP, due in large part to the difference in velocity between 1,008 feet per second and 876 feet per second. So although this is a wider, heavier round, the narrower, faster, lighter round impacts its target with a much greater force 
than the 45 ACP. So in summation, the 40 caliber Smith & Wesson impacts its target with 1.26 times the force of a 45 ACP round. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to those of you in the decision making process or just wanting to learn a little bit more about terminal ballistics. Thank you.